Okay, we are live. You can start. Carry on. Start, sir. Good morning to all. The world is full of diamonds. and we are having some of them here today to build this event with this note i would like to give my heartiest welcome to our respected dignitaries respected resource persons participants all professors and the whole edify team on behalf of internal quality assurance cell and the department of english of trimurti shikshan sanstar trimurti vimal bhai uttam rao patil arts and lay doctor bastar sadashi desle science college satri and edify team mumbai dear friends we have organized this national webinar on digital humanities because the field has been affected by the spread of corona virus across the world the worldwide lockdown and isolation has created the demand we need your moral support to make this event memorable and fantastic so i request to all of you now i am very, very happy, happy to invite the respected principal dr p s sonome to welcome the dignitaries on such auspicious event over to principal p s sonome नमस्कार नमस्कार ऑन ऑफ द बिहाफ ऑफ श्रीमती शिक्षण संस्था श्रीमती विमल बहुत पटेल आर्ट्स एंड लेट डॉक्टर भास्कर सदस्वी देशले साइंस कॉलेज साकरी आई वॉर्मली वेलकम ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर बी बी पवार रजिस्ट्रार कवित्री बैनाबाई चौधरी नॉर्थ महाराष्ट्र यूनिवर्सिटी जलगांव एंड डॉक्टर अजित के देशले डायरेक्टर श्रीमती शिक्षण संस्था साकरे रिसोर्स पर्सन डॉक्टर दिवेश कुमार भट्ट प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर ए पी खैरना डॉक्टर सुवर्णा शिंदे एंड डॉक्टर शशांक माने एंड ऑल द पार्टिसिपेट अक्रॉस द कंट्री आई हैव ग्रेट ऑनर टू रिलेट विथ माई कॉलेज इच इज सिचुएटेड इन ट्राइबल एंड रिमोट एरिया ऑफ साकरे रिमोट दैन एटी पर्सन स्टूडेंट इन आवर कॉलेज belong to st community our college was established in the year 1998 by the great visionary and renowned surgeon baba sir dr baska sadashiv deshte the management of our college is successfully handled by honorable dr mangalate deshte honorable dr mangalate uh, deshte and honorable dr ajinkya deshte i have great pleasure to inform you that Nine faculty members in our college have pursued side PhD, and seventeen faculty members have pursued MPhil degree. Our col our college has arts and science stream. More than eight hundred students are pursuing their higher studies in our college. Students are our college have achieved grand success of different fields. I once again warmly welcome any every one one of you. I would like extend my deep appreciation to the participant for all our india thank you positive actions combined with positive thinking results in success so with such we have such energetic personality for this national webinar as a inaugurator the renowned personality the registrar of kavayatri bahinabai choudhary north maharashtra 
University Jalgaon. I request to Honorable Professor Dr. B. V. Pawar sir to proceed his inaugural speech. Over to Professor Dr. B. V. Pawar. Please, sir. Uh, good morning, everybody. Friends. I am delighted to be here at the inaugural function of the national webinar on digital humanities at Vimalbhai Uttamrao Patil Arts and Science College Sakri this morning. At the outset, I must compliment the president of the inaugural function, Dr. Ajinka Desle, the principal of the college, Dr. P.S. Sonone, and the entire organizing team and the management of the college for envisioning a very relevant theme for this webinar. I must also express my deepest appreciation to the research fraternity present online. Webinars such as this bring all of us together in such difficult times of COVID pandemic and giving us an opportunity by providing a platform to share and express the research among ourselves. The aim of the organizing organizers behind organizing this national webinar is certainly to sharpen the skills and knowledge sets of the nation's human resources who are confined within the four walls of, the, of their house due to COVID-19. This one day webinar is a stage for all of us to sharpen our research skills by being an active participant, either as a contributor or as a listener. Friends, as you all know, from last three to five years, the UGC is uh, pressing all the universities and colleges to go for choice-based credit system. And by implementing choice-based credit system, it has removed the barriers of faculties. I mean, science faculty students can go for the courses from humanities. Humanities students can go for the courses which are related to the computer science and mathematics. So there are no boundaries between the faculties. and. Under these particular circumstances, under this choice-based credit system, if a student, science student goes for humanity, so such seminars or such webinars are very useful for the faculty, all the students and uh, faculty members from all across the uh, faculty, uh, various faculties. Uh, friends, as you all know, or there are, I mean, the resource persons and other persons that are related with the humanities, they what is digital humanity? Basically, uh, digital humanity is an area of scholarly activity at the intersection of computing or digital technologies and the disciplines of the humanities. So it is basically a proper blend of humanities and a computational sciences. So naturally, uh, if a person goes for human degrees in humanity, it will benefit the uh, society in terms of enhanced teaching. This digital humanities will help the students to learn by being able to see more, experience more, collaborate more, and they can go for the digital projects related to the humanities. Uh, friends, after completing the degrees in digital humanities, a graduate from digital humanities, he will be prepared for careers in business, business consultancies, government, media, and many other fields that require humanity knowledge as well as digital skills. Uh, basically, there are many benefits of the digital humanities. Uh, our renowned resource persons in this particular area, they will be giving, they will be throwing a light, and they will be enriching you with the knowledge of humanities proper with the blend of uh, uh, computer science and all that. Uh, as an inaugurator of this particular uh, webinar, uh, with these brief words, I declare that this particular webinar is inaugurated and open. Uh, friends, I once again congratulate the organizers for organizing this webinar and extend my best wishes to all the participants and hope that the technical sessions spread over the uh, complete day will be helpful in, the, in your research endeavor and as an outcome will contribute to the theme of the webinar. Friends, uh, organizing such webinar uh, requires more efforts 
and we must congratulate the organizers for putting their efforts and making this platform open for the researchers and the students who are interested in humanities as well as computer science, which we called as digital humanities. Uh, as a registrar of the university, I must advise all the participants to follow the guidelines of government issued from time to time and I will request them to stay home and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jai Hind, Jai Maharashtra. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind blessings. Now, the best leaders not only inspires us, but develop and empower us to live with passion. I kindly welcome the enthusiastic personality, respected Dr. Ajinkya Desle, the director of Trimurti Shikshan Sanstaj Sakri, to deliver the inaugural functions presidential speech. I request to Dr. Ajinkya Desle, over to, sir, please carry on. Good morning. Good morning dignitaries, eminent speakers, and dear attendees. It is my honor to address today's interesting webinar as a president. The interesting topic of digital humanities is really going to change the world. As we entered into 21st century, everyone thought actually that this world is going to be the digital era, the 21st century going to be the digital era, we are going to have many opportunities in the digital field. But alas, this digital thing crippled quite slowly in the rural area of India. We belong to the rural part of the India and we know that it has really crippled. It has not It has not gone far when we consider that just in the society so many revolutions which are continuously happening hello there's some problem in the internet connection. Okay. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, we can, yes. We can yes, hear sir. you. Yes. Yeah. yes. There are many revolutions which are continuously happening in this world. Some of them are societal revolutions. Some of them are physical. Revolution, that is digital revolution. With the advent of digital world, it was expected that the rural part of India would get transformed into the digital world and it will be world that is urbanization but somehow that has not happened probably because all now but the major problem was lack of inclination or motivation things we in india have many advantages we are in demographic dividend we have maximum number of young population in India. India holds the record of second highest maximum English speaking population in the world. With these two things, I can, I think that we can definitely change the world in better way. India can be the world leader. India uses its resources properly. And with the use of digital world, and with the proper guidance of the eminent faculties like you and as Dr. B.B. Pawar sir said, like there are many courses which are now coming up.
I think there is problem. Audio problem is there. Hello. Ha. Carry on, sir. Carry on. Carry on. Yes. 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 Yeah. So. Right. Self in self dependent world, their life, and hence can change our beloved India in proper way, positive way. With this, I would like to appeal everyone that though what literature has done for the society, there are many topics which are related to literature uh, in today's webinar. I was thinking what literature has done to the society. Literature has given the proper way, direction. to the life as given developed the thought process of everyone has uh, shown proper path in difficult situation and this situation current covid 19 situation definitely needs many other things it needs skill set enhancement and in our they can become competent and they can do everything at par considering the urban population considering the world i thank writing me for the presentation message i think this opportunity ask everyone to build up their immunity to stay warm and let's have a good day thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much for your valuable presidential remarks i take this opportunity to welcome the respected management behind this successful institution motherly figure respected dr mangala tai desle and who is the secretary of trimurti shikshan sanstha takri and respected runal tai desle the chairman of the murti shikshan sanstha sakri to support such moral support to us now i would like to request dr nilesh maichkar to hand over the session हेलो 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 गुड मॉर्निंग वन एंड ऑल आई एम डॉक्टर नीलेश मारिस्कर हार्टली वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू आफ्टर द ग्रैंड इनाग्रल सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट नाउ द इंटेलेक्चुअल फेस्ट फॉर dear participants the first session of this webinar will be conducted by honorable dr suvarna shinde ma'am i have great honor to introduce her she is working as a chodi of english at arts commerce bca and home science college for women devpur dure she is a honorable chairman of bos in english ma'am academic council member of mumbai recent university mumbai ma'am is senate member of recent women's university mumbai many students around 10 students have pursued phd under her guidance she is really she is really a motivating speaker for all of us now i would like to request honorable dr suvarna shinde ma'am 
to start the session to address the participants the topic she is going to address digital humanities and new literature over to dr shinde ma'am over to ma'am okay uh, good morning one and all uh, hope i am audible my sister yeah you are audible ma'am continue okay, okay. so good morning one and all um, thank you dr maister for that warm introduction thanks uh, at some i would like to extend my sincere thanks to the principal dr sunamani sir and honorable president ajinkya ji desai sir and the management and the icc coordinator dr jahagirdar of arts and science college sakri for giving me this opportunity to speak on digital humanities in this national webinar i'm truly happy to be here to share my views with the participants of this webinar across the country the topic of today's national webinar is digital humanities but before i proceed with my presentation today i would like to begin with a video clip of a few seconds this video clip was initially meant as an advertisement for a particular brand which conveys a very strong message are are anna kaha de bachche ko school mein padhana hai admission full hai chal bhai sab gaon mein school nahi hai to kaise padhegi mere poti ko bharti ko to gaon mein school nahi hai to kaise padhegi are wo padhe school mein sab ko kaise padha idea made in 2013 and now in 2020 it still goes strongly with our education scenario not only in maharashtra but almost in all the states of our country and worldwide times change and with the change in times we need to change our preconceived notions to move ahead in the given times we need to learn and unlearn uh again i'd like to show two pictures which lead us to the same thought till february 2020 mobile was not allowed in schools and in the post covid scenario teaching and learning takes place only through this teeny digital tool so the strong message is new technology has come to stay in our lives and has become an indispensable part of human life we need to adopt newer techniques digital humanities is an innovative way to research which brings together various branches of knowledge like mathematics engineering computer science and humanities to arrive at a new newer meaning with these words i'd like to turn to my topic and to my presentation today humanities are academic disciplines that study aspects of human society 
study of ancient and modern languages, literature, philosophy, history, archaeology, anthropology, human geography, law, politics, religion, and arts. Now, we will move on to our con concept today, which is digital humanities. So, what is digital humanities? Introduction, let us... Um, introduce ourselves to this new term. Although the term digital humanities has been floating around for over a decade, a precise definition is difficult to pin down. In fact, debates over how to describe the field and mark its borders predate the label itself. Still, some sort of definition is needed to move forward. So many uh, digital humanities related books and journals settle on working definitions while acknowledging that a static definition cannot fully explain the nuances of an evolving field of study. Here are some of the working definitions of digital humanities that serve to illustrate the diverse and dynamic nature of this field. At its core, digital humanities is more akin to a common methodical, uh, sorry, common methodological outlook than an investment in any one specific set of texts or even technologies. Yet, yeah, digital humanities is also a social undertaking. It harbors networks of people who have been working together, sharing researches, arguing, competing and collaborating for many years. A culture that values collaboration, openness, non-hierarchical relations, and agility. Uh, this was a definition given by Matthew in his book, What is Digital Humanities and What's It Doing in English Department? Uh, so another definition comes from Anne Bertie uh, from the book Digital Humanities. She says the phrase digital humanities describes not just a collective singular but also the humanities in the plural able to address and engage desperate various subject matters across media, language, location and history. But however heterogeneous the digital humanities is, unified by its emphasis on making, connecting, interpreting, and collaborating. Another uh, definition uh, which comes from the glossary of digital humanities is, digital humanities values collaboration, plurality, investigation of human culture, and the dis disruption of and reflection of traditional practices and is concerned with not just the use of digital technology for humanities projects, but how the use of digital technology for humanities projects changes the user's experience. So this definition was arrived at collaboratively during the conference in a um, which was uh, then put in, in glossary of uh, the digital humanities. DH, DH is a um, short form which is used for digital humanities. So DH can be defined as a new ways of doing scholarship that involve collaborative, transdisciplinary, and computationally engaged research, teaching, and publishing. Uh, there are various definitions given uh, for this uh, particular uh, field because, as uh, they say, no one definition can uh, sustain all the features which are involved into this uh, particular theory. So we'll see some more definitions, which are uh, either one-liners or two-liners, but they uh, shed light on some of the important features of digital humanities. 
so digital humanities is born of the encounter between traditional humanities and computational methods this when these two come together uh, digital humanities born digital humanities is work at the intersection of digital technology and humanities discipline johanna drucker said this then digital humanities is less a unified field than an array of convergent practices that explore a universe in which print is no longer the primary medium in which knowledge is produced and disseminated miriam posner a digital human uh, humanist tries to explain the nature of this concept when she says our key problem is this the humanities is a discipline that values subtlety nuance conflicting ideas and even paradox when you are working with computers on the other hand you have to format information precisely and rigidly so how do you use a computer to do humanities work should we stick to word processing is there a way to take advantage of newer tools like digital maps and data visualization for humanities work so digital humanities is not uh, a unified field but an array of convergent practices that explore a universe in which a print is no longer the exclusive or the normative medium in which knowledge is produced and or disseminated instead print, print finds itself absorbed into new multimedia configurations and b digital tools techniques and media have altered the production and dissemination of knowledge in the arts humanities and social sciences uh thus previously print was the only medium in which knowledge was produced but now various other tools like digital tools techniques and media have come into picture where production of knowledge in the spheres of arts humanities and social sciences are done with the help of new tools and techniques when it comes to application of these tools and techniques digital humanities can be applied to these two components uh the first component is pedagogy uh and the second is research digital uh, for the first component pedagogy digital tools and methodologies that can be applied to teaching and the examples given are data mining data visualization social media streaming media digital mapping online publishing digital film multimodal projects distant learning video games and virtual reality second component uh, which is research uh, here digital tools and methodologies that can be applied to scholarship and examples are data mining data visualization digital mapping open source publishing distant reading interdisciplinary approaches digital curation and network analysis while emphasizing the shift from print to digital tools and techniques digital humanists like ann uh, burdick johanna drucker peter lundfield todd presner and jeffrey uh, scanap in their preface to digital humanities state and i quote they say we live in one of those rare moments of opportunity for the humanities not unlike other great eras of cultural historical transformation transformation such as the shift from the scroll to the codex the invention of movable type the encounter with the new world and the industrial revolution ours is an era in which humanities have the potential to play a vastly expanded creative role in public life digital humanities represents a major expansion of the purview of the humanities precisely because it brings the values representational and interpretive practices meaning making strategies complexities and ambiguities of 
being human into every uh, realm of experience and knowledge of the world. So this is global, transhistorical, and transmedia approach to knowledge and meaning making. This is very important. The last line, it is global, transhistorical, and transmedia approach to knowledge and uh, meaning making. Now we come to uh, the next part, that is manifestos. Mani some of the manifestos were being decided by these digital humanities and we'll just uh, take a look into it. These people came together with some common beliefs, aims, objectives, motives, and policies. We need to see what were their manifestos to have a deeper understanding of what is digital humanities and what do they want to do and how they want to move ahead with it. Their manifestos go like this. Digital humanities means iterative scholarship, mobilized collaborations and networks of research. The emblem of digital humanities is a digital photograph of a hammer manual making superimposed over a folded page, the second text that now unfolds in three dimensions. Digital humanities recognize curation as a central feature of the future of the humanities discipline. Yes, there is something utopian at the core of digital humanities, the open, the unfixed, the contingent, the infinite, the expansive, and the no place. Themes of diversity, diversity studies over the past 30 years contribute to the humanities field. Then they focus on openness, open access, open source, open annotation, advocates for change in copyright laws and traditions. Research is pro project best. DH projects and research results are published online rather than in print. Emphasizes teamwork and co-authorship. Scholars with many talents needed for DH research. One of the important procedures adopted by digital humanities is text analysis. Textual analysis is a way for researchers to gather information about how other human beings make sense of the world. It is a methodology and data gathering process for, for those researchers who want to understand the ways in which members of various cultures and subcultures make sense of who they are and of how they fit into the world in which they live. Textual analysis is useful for researchers working in cultural studies, media studies, in mass communication, and perhaps even in sociology and philosophy. Now, what kind of source material do they use in digital humanities is a question. Let us seek the answer. Uh, published texts. Uh, the most notable digital humanities projects have performed analysis of traditional humanities texts. Then digital texts like websites, blogs, emails, etc. Primary material that is archives and special collection content and visual collections, both physical, physical that is to be digitized and digital. Now let us take a quick look at the popular working methods of digital humanities and they go like this. Online writing and blogging, open annotation, text analysis and data mining. Data mining is the practice of examining large pre-existing databases in order to generate new information. In simple words, data mining 
is defined as a process used to extract usable data from a large set of any raw data. It implies analyzing data patterns in large batches of data using one or more software. Data mining is also known as KDD, that is knowledge discovery in data. So the next one is digital ex exhibitions, then digital mapping or GIS, that is geographic information system. This is a conceptualized framework that provides the ability to capture and analyze spatial and geographic data. Then data visualization. This is the representation of information in the form of a chart, diagram, or picture, visual representation of information. Then link data, photogrammetry, virtual worlds, three-dimensional modeling. Photogrammetry is a new word. It is a science of making reliable measurements by the use of photographs and especially aerial photographs. And a virtual world is a computer-based online community environment that is designed and shared by individuals so that they can interact with each other in this simulated world using text-based two-dimensional or three-dimensional graphical mod models called avatars. Now digital humanities uh, include such activities as, like what kind of activities are included or come under digital humanities, I'm trying to make a list of it. Uh, curating online collections. We are mining large cultural da data sets data visualizations, representational technolo technologies, two-dimensional and three-dimensional modeling, information retrieval and analytics, multimedia, peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, GIS mapping, cultural mapping, print, wave, and database design, and digital publishing. So with these larger uh, set of activities, digital humanities bring together broadly these four kinds of people. The first and foremost important is visual resources specialists, then the faculty, students, and librarians. Now I'd like to uh, refer to some of the cases, uh, case studies or projects done by Digital Humanities using text analysis project. The first one was related to Agatha Christie's works and titled as <coughs> Vocabulary Changes in Agatha Christie's Mysteries as an Indication of Dementia, a Case Study which was made in 2009 by Ian Lancashire and Graham Hurst. Did Agatha Christie, who wrote several dozen mystery novels during her 53-year career, suffer from Alzheimer's related dementia was the problem, was the issue taken for the research. Suspected as much, actual evidence was advanced in March by a research team led by Ian Langshire and Graham Hurst, professors at the University of Toronto. The professors digitized 14 of Christie's novels and also included two more available in the Gutenberg online text archive. And then with the aid of textual analysis software analyze them for vocabulary size and richness and increase in repeated phrases like all sorts of and an increase in indefinite words like anything or something. As linguistic 
indicator showing the cognitive deficits typical of Alzheimer's disease. The results were statistically significant. Christie's lexicon decreased with age, while both the number of vague words uh, she employed and phrases she repeated were increased, thus showing the indication of dementia in her old age, reflected in her writing. Another project at uh, Digital Humanities dealt with longitudinal detection of dementia through lexical and syntactic changes in writing, a case study of three British novelists. First one was I Iris Murdoch, who died with Alzheimer's. Second was Agatha Christie, who was suspected of having died with Alzheimer's. And the third one was P.D. James, who aged healthily. The findings they arrived at stated that the signs of dementia can be found in diachronic of patients' writings and lead to new understanding of the work of the individual authors who they studied for this project. This study was undertaken by four professors. Um, so, uh, while coming to the concluding part of my presentation, I will focus on some of the special features some of the special features of digital humanities, which are reflected through the discussion and definitions. And they are uh, the application of technology to the humanities, working with digital media or in a digital environment. Digital humanities means humanities done digitally. Transition moment towards future humanities is one of the very important aspects. Digital humanities is considered a big thing. That is, this concept has many nuances. Then, method and community go together. Collaboration and interdisciplinarity go hand in hand. Using digital and studying digital is the focus. So, to use Villard McCarthy's words, what is digital humanities is a question for the humanities not to be answered, but continually to be explored and refined. Thus, digital humanities tries to model the surrounding world in order to reach at a better understanding of humans, their activities, and what they produce. The motto of digital humanities is making invisible visible. Now coming to the new literature, literature portrays human life, its hopes and aspirations, and also its pain and sufferings. The human race the human race is presently traversing through a COVID-19 era, a global pandemic. Suddenly our lives have come to a standstill due to a virus named COVID-19. People are confused, terrified, devastated. The confusion, uncertainty, anxiety, terror, the human mind is being expressed nowadays through a new kind of literature. This is being written through blogs, tweets, posts on Instagram, Facebook, and also on WhatsApp. The sudden lockdown and its after effects, the issues of migrants, stories we read about them, their pain and sufferings, and the guilt which comes along with it is going to produce a new kind of literature. This might be named as pandemic literature. The doctors, health workers, policemen, people engaged in essential services, their predicament, their intense struggle with the pandemic situations 
the dread with which their families live every single day will become a text in the post covid scenario experiences and feelings related to this pandemic whenever expressed through words or pictures in whichever language place country or culture it will be expressing the same angst across the globe the global and local will become one not only the human life but the economics and politics will be affected arts fine arts literature and humanities will bear these scars and a new literature will rise on the horizon digital humanities will have to deal with this new branch of knowledge across the globe while witnessing this disturbing and difficult times let us hope to create a new literature which could lead the humanity to a new direction to a hope to win every struggle and to move ahead to write a new saga of the survival of human race through all odds thank you thank you ma'am thank you your thought provoking session was there you have combined digital ligation and new literature very beautifully you have ripped about the theoretical information about the digital humanities as well as how it makes impact as well as how it makes impact on the human race you have proved that we can do local to global as honorable prime minister mr narendra modi said that local things should be made global and digitalization is one of the source which can be used to make it global there thanks a lot ma'am thank you now we are going to start second session which will be conducted by honorable dr divesh kumar d bhat <laughs> sir is working as an assistant professor department of english md gram seva sankuls gujarat vidyapeet sadra taluka and district gandhinagar gujarat i honor to tell you that he did his ma in two languages english and sanskrit he did his phd from hemachandra north gujarat university patan on the topic study of literature with reference to tribal writings of dapal with reference to tribal writing of dapal william dapal he has presented research paper in several national and international conferences he is going to address on the topic the accessing post covid 19 scenario of digital humanities so i like to request honorable dr bhat sir to address your thought with the audience with the participants thank you over to dr bhat sir thank you sir thank you am i audible welcome am i audible yes sir yeah you are audible audible okay okay so now i shall i shall start so uh, good morning to one and all and uh, uh, respected sona madam and other uh, panel panel members as well as all the august audience who are just uh, connected on this digital platform and today just to my deliberation just i just i will i am going to start from where respectful mail madam has stopped actually madam came just brought the topic of digital humanity uh, from that is uh, from that is making local and global okay so my topic or my deliberations uh, are on how how or what just uh, just let us assess the post covid scenario of 
digital classroom okay uh, uh, is my slide just just a second Sir, sir, uh, sir, hello, hello, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, your voice is breaking, sir. Just make it clear. Okay, okay, okay. I'm adjusting. Some disturbances. Okay, uh, I'm adjusting. Better, better now, if you use, uh, sir, better if you use headphone there. No? Uh, okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. If you have. Thank okay. You, thank you. Now it is. It's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay. okay. So we we are we are going to just just I am going to just look at this. Assessing the post-COVID-19 scenario of academic classroom. That how how we are going to teach our students. As we all know that uh, uh, this uh, how back in February or sometime uh, sometime in just end of January there was an epicenter in Wuhan, China. And a virus breaks out from uh, somewhere, and it spreads. Just the epidemic of China that converts into pandemic and spreads like uh, uh, that is fire of wounds into entire nation, and we are all caught arrested on a bell. That is the we are we... not clearly audible. Hello. Your uh, audio is not. Uh, can you probably use the uh, mic? Hello. You are not audible hello. Sir, properly. Uh, hello, sir. Hello. No. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I'm addressing. Addressing. Some hello. disturbances are there. Okay. No. No. I'm, I'm doing it. Uh, okay. Now. Okay. Sir. Now it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. In between it happens, sir. Now it's okay. 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 So this COVID nineteen and it this pandemic the spread of pandemic just gave us just arrested us unaware and there were now a new code of conduct were imposed upon us from uh, just from such a tiny virus and we have to maintain social and physical distance it has become mandatory for us. to save care of ourselves okay and this created a great challenge to all the traditional way of life developed by humanity yes we just ours that is actually man man is the, we we are from so from history we have been taught and we know that and we are living the life like that man is a social animal now this social the word the term social has shifted its, its meaning we have now mandate it is it has become mandatory for all of us to maintain a challenge now let us see that this is only the case of this covid there may be in future there may be some more this kind of pandemics okay so now the challenge to us or this is i would i would say that this is an awakening call to all of us to look for this to find out some new ways to novel ways that how uh, our traditional uh, 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 framework and infrastructure that have been developed okay from class of many to distance learning how will have to do it okay and second most important thing is that when this kind of uh, quarantine shell uh, phases come fall upon the human society okay 
like economic like the economic activity they cannot afford to be uh, to to have a pause in the same way our education academic system that cannot be allowed to have a halt there we always need we always need the the ro the ball rolling or the the spinning of knowledge research information that must continue uh, just without any stop so in this way when we have to maintain this kind of physical distance maintain mandatory distance okay at the time the time demands us to find out some novel ways that is okay now so far as our education system is concerned you know that is all education all academic systems are aimed or just the aim of all aim and objectives of all our academic system they are just they are just in a broader sense they are behavioral change knowledge enhancement skill sharpening and making the youth of the nation employable okay and for this every nation every society every culture every civilization has developed a, a kind of infrastructure just and so far as our indian culture uh, indian uh, indian society is concerned uh, we said we in india we have first of all so far as a pyramid of uh, management okay that we have higher authorities like government agencies like ugc hrdc okay uh, then uh, they form the curriculum the curricula is framed the policy they are policy maker then that policies are Uh, given to the local management systems and local management systems they provide the infrastructures to uh, for the implementation of those policies okay and that comes to the teachers now teachers role is to teach is to uh, is a, they are the real executors of the transformers of uh, the policies given to them the uh, the curriculum the syllabus they okay, handed over to them and they come to uh, they 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 teach the students the youth they train so far as higher education is concerned they train okay and these students are the receiving part of all these things that is they have that motivation that dreams to pursue to uh, build up to construct their career they they come to the um, uh, to 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 for for the brighter school brighter education brighter uh, careers they come and in this way the entire academic scenario takes place okay now all these things all these things is brought to a classroom now what's a classroom classroom is a concept friends classroom just is not just that four wall infrastructure classroom is a space is a room is a space where important this teaching learning exchange that takes place it's the most happening place i would say in so far as uh, in our social activities the most happening place as as like the markets and the market the commercial complexes the classroom is also the most happening place okay as we know that on and as we most of us all are teachers we know that teachers teach a teacher is a king of classroom okay and we know that all even so many uh, so many times even some experts also uh, tell us some senior experts also tell us that is uh, whatever it is that is when a teacher enters into the classroom yes he has his own agenda and he 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 um, presents his, uh, his knowledge okay so from the part of teacher from the teacher side i would say the teacher imparts instructions to his students he presents analysis of certain topics he explains the things he collects gathers the feedback he evaluates and ultimately he tests the students okay from the side of students if we say that students whatever the instruction that has been given they try to follow it okay the analysis of the text so far as our humanity class or leadership class classroom classroom concerned we can say that is suppose i explain a poem 
okay they try to grasp it if they don't understand then they will try to raise a doubt okay they will the doubt will be raised the teacher will with some another illustrations another viewpoint another corner will try to explain and this way all the variety of students will get this kind of things then second thing the students that they take notes sometimes students demand repetition all these are the activities being performed are being performed in the classroom they and we know all that is sometimes students seek exam oriented important questions that's also true reality and because exam is a reality for the student uh, it, it's a hurdle that they have to pass and sometimes they ask this kind of this teachers provide them too so teacher instructs student receives and mutually they do doubt solving they re explain and they discuss and in this way that is suppose if it be 55 minutes out of this 55 minutes of class i think 14 minutes will be invested in doing all these activities and ultimately this thing this happens so a classroom is this and this this is a traditional concept right from the ancient india that even rishis taught to their students or today teachers or today in college and schools teachers are teaching the same classroom is coming but now this when we are to maintain social or that is physical distance more, more precise it has given us that is given us a, a challenge to rethink about this classroom so classroom has to be there but now the class the shape or form of classroom we will have to change then this covid or maybe in future this kind of uh, maybe this uh, that will have to uh, equip ourselves with all that kind of preparations equipments uh, so that we can function well uh, in this kind of things and this post covid scenario has uh, it is the demand of time okay so we have virtual digital classrooms okay see you see the this webinar is itself an example that how from one corner of gujarat i am talking and another maharashtra and all over in the participants from all over india they have joined and they are we are sharing our views on one digital platform so through this kind of video conferences google classroom and there are so many applications and platforms like zoom uh, uh, on which we are doing our admodo and there are so many things so a classroom now a teacher will have to switch over to that physical tra traditional face to face uh, level to this digital platforms and we let us assess that what how these kind of things are going to work effectively okay Uh, whereas there are some uh, from the there are some MOOC portals also available uh, by the efforts of government and uh, so many private institutions also that MOOC that is massive open online classroom uh, courses that is Khan Academy is offering offering an academy course that is why I am why I am Prabha Diksha yes there are so many platforms which uh, which have some excellent powerful uh, courses available where a student need to register uh, just with some nominal or with no fees had to attend to the class and just generate the knowledge or get information knowledge and all these things now out of this three two things okay the combination of these two things can be uh, and we can think about that is physical virtual class yes that is sometimes actually uh, as people Uh, and somewhere in media even in, even if you read newspaper or somewhere in mass media people say or there are claims that technology will replace teacher no 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 face to face teaching cannot be replaced by uh, any technology but it is true that now onwards the teachers who use technology effectively will be replaced by the teachers who do not actually there must be technology
debate sir so your voice is not clear so viewers are complaining that your voice is breaking it's not clear लेक्चर वो मस्त जरूरी है उनकी आवाज में थोड़ा प्रॉब्लम है अच्छा परफेक्ट अच्छे लेवल्स आपने तो मस्त समझा हां ओके हेलो एम आर डिबल सर ये सर ये सर गो एड ओके ओके थैंक यू सो ब्लन विल हैव टू गो फॉर दिस फ्लिप द क्लासरूम्स एंड ब्लेंडेड लर्निंग ओके so in the concept of flipped classroom as most of or most of you must must be utilizing it or must be using must be aware of it just let me explain it in a in a slight in a uh, in brief that is the flipped flipped classroom in flipped classroom what happens a teacher previously records the material the text or and uh, whatever the topic he wants to discuss with the class he pre records it on his own device then he puts that uh, uh, video content uh, on onto some social platform sharing pro- platform and shares it with the students okay with an instruction that when the students come turn to classroom they come with uh, uh, having uh, gone through that video content okay so when that is and we can say that out of Hundred percent, eighty percent will will go through that. Okay, when eighty percent of students have gone through these things, so when classroom starts, what happens? It opens with direct dis- discussion. Okay, whatever the things analysis thing that that has been done in the uh, in the video. Okay, so students come with the doubt and uh, reanalysis. Okay. so this allows the teacher suppose there is a poem or an extract or a short story so most of time as as it is in, invested in our humanity class it is it is to letting the student know what happened and who who the who and or something like but all, everything has been done in the pre, in nicely in the video okay so now analysis and the discussion the scope of discussion is increased through this flipped classroom in the same way blended classroom blended learning in blended what happens that is when when uh, no or not all teachers are good at video recording or techno savvy so in that case what happens that is a teacher becomes a facilitator he picks up the difference the wonderful things available on the on the net suppose if i am going to teach a drama okay if it be a popular drama this i will find many movie cinematic adaptations of that movie or dra- drama performed the recordings of performed drama on the stage so i will collect all these things and because we know that www that is world wide web is there is plethora of information but what is to be picked up 
the students a young mind youth they don't know so teacher being facilitator picks up these things and provides them with the uh, on shares them with the uh, uh, just um, that media or through whatsapp or any other media and then he gives in a instruction that is they come after having gone through that content and when they come so in this way this flipped or blended classroom well this kind of models if teachers will adapt in adopt in future yes that that will make them efficient teacher and this teaching learning exercise so far as humanity is, is concerned we can exploit them in a maximum way yes now that is evaluation and testing okay that is online and we know that all these universities are facing the same thing but we shall uh, discuss on uh, uh, discuss that on the later part of my uh, presentation now see in the classroom of humanity a teacher the role of teacher that what we do or what are what are our role that is we have to just we have to make our students uh, uh, capable of critical thinking okay so with the help of this kind of digital and virtual things we can just drive them to a greater extent for this critical thinking yes we can make them efficient communicators collaborators and really as i know and this is my personal experience that um, this virtual screen that attracts our students a lot okay so uh, by making them um annex some video recording of that uh, enacting a role play or something like that that enhances that creativity okay and in this way uh, to teacher can capture this forces through by uh, through the technology blending or through these virtual platforms so now when we we are working from distance when a student is within our purview within our class four walls of our class or within our space okay in that classroom control that is as we know that a teacher is a master <coughs> or the king sorry but when when you are working digital that is on on digital platform it poses so many challenges for the teachers also okay and first and foremost uh, requirement for a teacher that is to be techno savvy now we know that all our staff rooms our staff rooms are formed of two categories of teachers we have some techno savvy in less number though but there are techno phobic okay so a teacher will have to be techno savvy will have to be capable of bridging communications bridging external focus uh, having some strong external focus will have to be good facilitator as i i told uh, earlier he must be a must have some social skills so that he bring together the student and you know that all teachers have the strong subject knowledge also okay so with this challenges a teacher will have to function but uh, another challenge is there is some we have some infrastructure so far as if i wanna i want to conduct a class yes in i require some infrastructure requirements now infrastructure facilities they are to be provided by the middle level management so so far as in the same way now this the middle level management will how to take this uh, will how to make it sure that good computer labs are available in uh, academic institution good uh, good internet connectivity is there uninterrupted electric supply is there okay secondly the smart mobile phones smart classrooms they are there with even teachers as well as the students okay and that will that will create a um, a good platform and that will make possible that how even today let me tell myself uh, actually at my place i am working from another place because at my place there is uh, pre monsoon planning and because of that there is the elect there is no electric supply so in the morning i came to know and just i i traveled some 20 kilometers to uh, to, to one of my friends house to address these things so this technical things are to be also looked at uh, when we are working uh, working on digital platforms and there are the challenge posed by this post covid 19 scenario okay 
now the things as we know that all pockets all pockets carry a smartphone most often uh, just in a maximum level that is most pockets carry smartphones and smartphones uh, we know that is are and even we have we have even complaints for the teachers and from society also that uh, uh, students are being addicted to this tool smart uh, smartphone okay now it becomes the responsibility it becomes the uh, technical uh, we can say the neck of a teacher that he could convert this wonderful tool this smartphone into a teaching tool okay if we can do it if suppose i have to teach some grammar or uh, teach some um, uh, one poetry or drama or any novel i can just turn them to this learning okay from first chapter i will give some uh, mcq questions and will give share them on the google classroom or in this mode okay and they have to answer it they will do it directly so in this way by using these kind of things uh, or by giving some assignments through this digital digital formats we can um, we can just exploit this smartphone in a very wonderful way now when we are working in a digital way when we are working digitally okay when students and teacher teacher and students are operating from uh, distance okay there are three important points as i marked on my uh, my uh, plate also slide also that that first thing is that is sincerity and innovative style of teachers because teachers now in a in a traditional way i went into the classroom and just i started opening open this poem and just read no 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 when i am operating from distance i will have to invent such innovative and such magnificent way so that my students understands me my students grasp me and they they find some challenges in the in the teaching plan which i have i i i i present to them they feel they must feel they must understand that there is some innovative there is some innovation and that must revert their attention secondly from the students side actually now students will also also have to work with more sincerity more responsibility and more punctuality yes and they will have to work hard because until now they were with the uh, uh, in the institutions in hostels somewhere okay one they were working from home yes this home um, does not give them that that environment so they will have to develop a mindset of learning okay and uh, lastly the parents until now that parents uh, uh, parents had the simple thing admitted the student and and student goes to college but now when student is working their boy or the boy or the son or daughter is working at home they will have to more vigilant they will have to monitor that what their words are investing their time actually because we know that there are so many uh, dis distractions when you are online when you are with there is there are plethora of material and that material may be distracting so uh, uh so many distractions are there so the students will have to work with commitment the, yes there are resistance to change also okay because when from the both side suppose a, a teacher goes to the institution he has his designated space yes and from there he has to work he has to go to classroom but now when i am i'm at home just i am in my resty mood and at the 4 to 5 i have to take a class so oh, that is quite much difficult for me so will have to just overcome this resistance to change and last but the not least is the procrastination yes from on, on the both the students and teacher side will have to overcome this procrastination the the tendency of living think that is i'll do it tomorrow okay we'll do it this yes, do it at 11th hour no 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 when you are working you have you will have to address this risk also and will have to try to Uh, overcome them uh, in a very effective way and now see I, i picked up one meme from the internet some somewhere from from internet okay and it's a very it's a humorous but it presents the stark reality that is when students are using technology to make tiktok yes they will act like scientists 
but when it comes to make some academic project for distance learning okay so so they will show or their enthusiasm will be at the lowest so in this way also we'll have to work for this okay now last as as uh, all the universities at present even today they are facing this challenge that how to how to examine how to declare students pass without them uh, without testing the knowledge and without bringing them on the on campus so this is also a challenge okay so on online examinations when if we uh, go for that then we'll have to find out some novel kind of that is uh, different from the traditional questions the the nature of questions so far as our humanities are concerned also we'll have to find out some novel ways of uh, just uh, of examination nature of examination okay because we have to conduct so many exams right from entrance unit test semester and viva oc okay and uh, there are merits of uh, conducting because there are so many possibilities of mal practicing unavailability of infrastructure and there are so many things so we we'll have to address all these issues also so this is what i wanted to deliberate over this uh, thank you stay safe stay healthy thank you I am not audible, sir. You are now. You are audible. Who are they? Are they? Upon who will claim for that? Hello. Am I audible now, sir? Ah, now. Am I audible now, sir? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Now you are. nice nicely audible sir okay sir i really thank for your wonderful session as you have said that you now the role of the teacher is change once upon a time teacher was a teacher now it is a facilitator and teacher must be techno savvy if you make excuse that i don't know technology i i am unable to handle mobile so student will make fun of you so we must be techno savvy there and first of all i like to thank Sir, you travel for 20 kilometers for this webinar. I really thankful for that one. So there is a question from the chat box. So I like to ask question. Are you? I am audible, yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah. So I like to ask question on behalf of Gunjan Chaturvedi. Yeah. From chat box, she asks, can a digital classroom also be as happening place as the traditional one? What do you think, sir? Yes. perfectly perfectly very good question really yes if if a teacher can just just as as a teacher is capable and powerful enough to bring the students in his physical classroom if the teacher presents uh, and 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 attracts the students into his digital classroom okay then it is going to be the most most happening place because because now we see that is uh, the 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 students whom we are teaching they are digital natives okay they are much more powerful than even the previous generation at the use of technology so they will take up it as a channel challenge okay i will say i will say that is a teacher will have to make his teaching plan in such a way that it appears challenging to the students okay let me give you an example example that is all the students nowadays are new generation students even they are more addicted to the games have you ever noticed why they because the games offer them that is once you clear first level you will have to just you will be given an, another difficult uh, level level 2 level 3 level 4 okay and even we have seen that at some in, in in some games like the blue whales even they were ready to kill themselves okay so this challenging nature if a teacher can exploit 
exploit this challenging nature of student yes this digital classroom can be a wonderful even it a most wonderful and as i said that no technology is going to replace the teacher but techno savvy teachers are going to replace the techno phobic teachers okay okay sir over to you yeah thank you sir thank you I mean, okay. Okay. Thanks for your wonderful session and wonderful answers also. Thank so, you. Now we are going to move third session, <laughs> and the third session will be conducted by Honorable Principal Dr. A. P. Khairnar Sir. Dr. A. P. Khairnar Sir is ex officiating dean of languages, languages in K. B. C. North Maharashtra University, Jalgaon. He is a ex BOA chairman in English of Kavitri Bainabai Choudhury, North Maharashtra University, Jalgaon. Presently, sir, <coughs> he is occupying the seat of Senate member in North KBC, North Maharashtra University, Jalgaon. I like to tell that, sir, is the president of English Teachers Association of KBC. North Maharashtra University. He is a member of CAS in KBC North Maharashtra University Jalgaon. He is being a principal in his college. He has arranged three international conferences, national seminars, and student-centered activities. He edited numerous books. i like to tell you that six student including me have completed their phd under the able guidance of dr ap khainar sir and he is really a comedian good orator he has delivered several lectures on various academic issues and topics today he is going to address on the topic digital <coughs> feminism a perspective so i like to request i like to invite honorable dr ap khainar sir to address on the topic digital feminism over to you khainar sir over to you am i audible sir yeah yeah you audible you can continue very good morning to all of you i am principal dr ashok khairnar honorable dr mangala tai deshle secretary sri murti shikshan sanstha sakri respected professor bibi pawar rajista kavitri bhagna bhai saudari north maharashtra university jalgaon honorable mrs mrunal tai desle chair person of trimurti shikshan sanstha sakri respected dr ajinkya desle director trimurti shikshan sanstha sakri respected dr suvarna sinde honorable principal dr p s sonone who is the person behind this national webinar and who has taken a good initiative for this national webinar convener of this national webinar dr jahagirdar sarunke coordinator of this webinar dr nilesh madichkar dr mane dr bhat mr viral didia teaching and non teaching staff of the college and dear participants at the outset i express my gratitude to the organizers for inviting me to deliver the speech at national conference. it is a matter of pride and place that a college in hilly area is organizing national webinar on digital humanities this is a very unique and innovative thing the webinar is organized by using ict is really praiseworthy we know that we have been in lockdown due to corona due to this calamity due to this national calamity due to this world crisis and in such a time we academicians should take initiative should talk we must be vibrant and i appreciate the efforts of this college and that too small college which is coming forward and showing courage for great academic initiative that of organizing national webinar i therefore congratulate the management principal dr p s sonone convener of this webinar dr jagirdar salunke and coordinator 
of this webinar, Dr. Nilesh Maliskar and the team of this college. What is feminism? Feminism is a very comprehensive term. Feminism is a very important contemporary literary theory. I will first discuss feminism and its development, then I will come to digital feminism. The word feminism is derived from two components. Feme means woman in French, and isme means a social movement or political ideology. Feminism is a literary and critical term with sociological, historical, psychological, and political connotations. It is one of the critical theories about the issues of women. I mean, feminism discusses the assigned roles and interprets literature showing the unfair presentation of women characters. I mean, it, it presents the role of women and the images of women presented in literature and analysis of that evaluation of that, evaluation of their roles in literature, that is the main part. In a line, if I, want, if I want to define what is feminism, feminism is nothing but vocal for equal. Vocal for equal is the right of women. It strongly, this feminism strongly advocates female writers to reject male-oriented language and design their own. Feminist literary criticism is an approach for analyzing women's images presented through literature and challenges writing that presented women with bias to ideology. It also advocates to reject the canon of literature. I mean, when, when we see literature, we find in different ages, the images of women have been presented in different ways. I mean, we find biased images of women. I mean, not justice is done to them. Unfair images are presented, and feminism is the literary theory which evaluates that. And that's why it also advocates to reject the canon of literature. Feminism works for the reformation of society, transformation of society. It covers two important issues. One is equality, and the second is their rights. I mean, feminism is based upon these two issues. This moment aims at establishing uh, equality between men and women. It is based on political, cultural, and economic ideologies. The movement was the protest against social, political, cultural, and economic restrictions on the basic rights of women. Through this movement, they wanted to make protest of the discrimination on the basis of gender. What we come to know, women are treated as subordinate on the basis of danger, uh, on the basis of uh, gender, they are, they are treated as subordinate, they are treated as weak, they are treated as secondary. I mean, this is not good. Through this moment, they wanted to make the protest. It demands, I mean, this theory demands equality and fair justice in everything. It fights for the rights of women. It refuses superiority and inferiority complex. It demands fair attitude and fair treatment as human being, as she possesses equal capacity, equal competence, equal ability. It challenges and refuses the patriarchal system. The role of women was to get married and to look after home. I mean, these are the cycles of the family. Since the ancient time, we have been, uh, we have been watching that women have been oppressed. The oppression of women by male-dominated male society down the centuries is both a maternal reality and a psychological phenomenon. Patriarchy has suppressed women's creative arts and the very foundation of their life. We know that woman has the spirit and that spirit is known as life force. I mean, which, which is very much important, which enables her, I mean, uh, to uh, create her own image and that is suppressed that is disturbed by the patriarchal society. Under the patriarchy, women suffered from inequalities and underestimations. I mean, this is the curse. 
I mean, this is the first done by uh, uh, patriarchy, that of inequalities and underestimation. Underestimating women is not good. Man looks at women as something a lack. A negativity, irrationality, chaos and darkness. Men's sexual desires define women's roles and give them secondary status. They are treated as subordinate. In this sense, in this connection, a number of personalities, a number of visionary people have contributed a lot, have presented their opinions. Aristotle says that female is female by virtue of certain lack of qualities. I mean, Aristotle is of the opinion that woman lacks some virtues. I mean, she is very secondary and she deserves that. Shakespeare also states that frailty, thy name is woman. I mean, woman is treated as weak and emotional. I mean, she is frail. She is as frail as a dry leaf. She is, she is very submissive. She is very emotional. And uh, sometimes she gets over, over emotional. And that's why uh, Shakespeare says, frailty, thy name is woman. We come across feminist approach in medieval period. When we talk of medieval period, Renaissance period, and the modern period, we come to know that the image of woman in medieval period was somewhat confused. I mean, it was also said that better to beat walnut and women. I mean, that was that was also the image, that, that was also the approach to look at women of the society. I mean, better to the society, that was not good. So during medieval time, we come across such a feminist approach that that woman was also treated as weak, and woman was, was also treated as secondary. At the same time, there are some authors, there are some writers, those who presented the strong image of women. Among them, Chaucer is one. When we look at Chaucer as one of the characters, uh, one of the authors, I mean, who has presented right image, strong image, proper image, and that image is presented to uh, the wife of Bath. The wife of Bath is shown as strong woman. We know that it was the age of religious doctrine, religious principles. I mean, morality uh, was the only principle, only rule of that age, and everyone had to follow the religion. Everyone had to follow the church, the preaching of the church the orders of the church, but it was the wife of God who rejected that reason and uh, came forward, came ahead as the strong woman. I mean, this was also the image presented by Chaucer in the Canterbury Tales. At the same time, we come to know that during Renaissance period, women went one step ahead and began to publish their literature. It means that she came to know her power her creative arts, her ability, her intellectual ability. And they began, they began to use their creative, uh, creative platform for their expressions. The woman in Renaissance period took active participation in politics. Elizabeth I was the best example of political government. During the second half of the 16th century, women came to throne in the beginning of 17th century but they did not have their own identity. Instead, they were known by their husbands. They were known by their male partners. It was the period of their development, but it did not give them their identity, special identity, I mean, separate identity, unique identity. I mean, Renaissance period gave a kind of freedom to women, a kind of emancipation, emancipation to women, but it was up to some extent. I mean, it was not given a full freedom, and that's why they were known by their by their male partners, or I can say they were known by their husbands. It was the period of their development, and it also created and enriched the theoretical framework of feminism. It means that Renaissance period gave a foundation for this feminism. Theory. We also see epoch making epoch making essay and that of Mary Wollstonecraft. Mary Wollstonecraft 
published an essay in 1792 entitled Vindication of the Rights of Women. I mean, this essay was a manifesto of feminism. Mary Wollstonecraft was the great supporter of the women. This essay is the justification of the rights of women. She was influenced by the French Revolution. And we know French Revolution talked of liberty, equality. And when she was influenced by French Revolution, I mean, we know that during French Revolution, Talleyrand Perigord, a French politician, proposed a national education policy in which he recommended that French girls should be educated with their brothers till the age of eight. Then the girls will remain at home. I mean, in that education policy, which was proposed by French politician, I mean, the education of girl was recommended only up to eight years and also with their brothers. And after that, the girl should stay at home. I mean, that was the policy. I mean, kind of limited, limited education. I mean, which even could not uh, make their development. I mean, that type of limited education was recommended uh, in that education policy by the French politician. Mary Wollstonecraft wrote a book entitled Thoughts on Education of the Daughters in 1787. And that book, really raised the voice for the education of daughters, education of the girls, and she, she strongly educated the formal education to girls. She considered that lack of education is the root, root cause of the suffering of women. I mean, without education, we women cannot go away. Uh, women cannot uh, make their progress. Women cannot go away from their uh, subordination or you can say sufferings or you can say predicaments with them. I mean, during 1880s and 1900, I mean, during these two decades, I mean, the end of 18th century, the first feminist movement was in its infancy and challenging the traditional view that women are subordinate to men. I mean, this was the, uh, this was the decade. I mean, end of the 18th century was challenging the status and that two secondary status of women. When women changed the outlook to look at themselves, the critics and journalists gave new title to women, and that is new. She tried to search for a job. She, she uh, tried to complete her education. She, she, was, uh, she was expecting a good life. I mean, she was, she was dreaming for ambitions, aspirations, at the same time, career. And she went out of home. This was the struggle for independence and self-respect. And new woman built her own image and she struggled for independence and self-respect. In the 90s, the woman began to buy planes, ride bicycles, and had short hair. This was a big change, a daring step of women, but the society was not ready to accommodate such women. I mean, society was traditional, conventional, patriotic, and women began to change, and they were very old. And in such a situation, it became a problem for society. But women did not take any care of the patriarchal society. And this was this was really a bold step, I will say, of uh, women. I mean, this was really the beginning of feminism. There are, there are some women authors who have presented the images of women as good, as bold, as superior, as strong, and competent, and the authors were Jane Austen, George Eliot, and Bronte sisters. I mean, these three authors had given proper place in their respective works, or you can say, in their novels. When we, when we, when we talk of, uh, I mean, Middle March, Middle March by George Eliot, we come to know that Dorothea Brooke, Dorothea Brooke was a young, fascinating girl with noble aspirations, wants to improve her life. At the same time, I mean, conscious of her secondary status. And that's why Dorothea Brooke in Middle March by George Eliot struggles a lot to improve her life. When we, when we see 
women characters in the novels of Jane Austen. Emma, Emma is the central character. Emma is the heroine of the novel. Emma, Emma, I mean, struggles for her identity, struggles to build her own image, and struggles to uh, 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 fulfill her dreams and aspirations. In Sense and Sensibility, we find the same. In Pride and Prejudice, Elizabeth is also a powerful girl, and she is very much able to make proper choice. At the same time, the image of new woman is presented by George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw is such a dramatist who has presented a proper image, I mean, a suitable image, that of new woman. Before this, the image of woman was as meek, as very submissive, I mean, living domestic life, has not crossed the threshold of the house, unable to establish herself as an individual without the help of man. It means that without the help of man, woman cannot live, even if woman cannot build her own image. That was the image. But Jimmy Shaw has broken that tradition and he has presented such a type of woman that uh, who is very much strong. Jibisha was of the opinion that the nature of human being was neither masculine nor feminine exclusively, but a mixture of them. The attributes of womanliness and manliness owe more to the environment and conventional traditions. I mean, the attributes of womanliness and manliness are given by the society, are given by the uh, patriarchal society. I mean, womanliness, womanliness it means that the role which is uh, the role of a domestic life, the role which is very much confined to family, I mean, that attribute is given by the patriarchal society. Even the clinical psychology tells us that womanliness and manliness are not the attributes. I mean, these are, these are the genuine traits uh, which we find in men and women. There are natural and deep-rooted traits of personality. The notion of passivity is developed from the childhood by the society. It is not biological trait. Men help women to remain in the illusion that they are born to serve men. That is the very noble role which is imposed by patriarchal society upon women. And this is the, uh, this is the illusion which women also uh, uh, keep intact. And that's why women, women but do not like to make any disillusionment, disillusionment, and disillusionment of this of this role will definitely break the affectionate tie between husband and wife, between man and woman. Jibisha presented women characters with individualities and choices. He presented women with willpower and life force. I mean, the spirit, the spirit which gives energy, which gives enthusiasm. Which, uh, which uh, uh, gives a kind of kind of force and which is known as like the life force and that life force which is behind the, behind the life which is uh, behind living successful life that life force is presented in arms and the man through the character of Raina. Raina is the heroine of that play. In that play, we find two characters, which are the male characters. One is Sergius and other is Blanche. Blanche is a false hero who is just uh, who is just making sure of his love. I mean, the, the, the uh, searches and Blanche is the true hero. I mean, Raina is able to make distinction between searches and Blanche. She does not run after Sergius, who is a false hero. She runs after Blanche, who is a true man, who is a genuine human being. And this is this is the power. This is the power. I mean, to know between good and bad, to know between false and true, false and genuine. I mean, she can make distinction between Sergius and Blanche. I mean, she possesses that ability. She possesses that competence. Such a, uh, such a wonderful, powerful heroine is presented by Jimmy Shaw through the character of Ryan. In Man and Superman, and Whitefield is presented, who runs after uh, Tanner and uh, she, she compels him to stop and uh, ask, asks him that you cannot be the Superman without my help. I mean, this is the strong role played by uh, 
and white page. We we also see. We also see. I mean, the character of Eliza Julie in Magmalee. Professor against Wayne, very scholarly person, very dominant person, a great teacher. But when she has been learning, she does not forget her individuality. She, remember, she does not remain under the pressure of Professor Higgins. I mean, she is a girl with individuality. And uh, she becomes such a hero who is very strong, competent. And this is the image of new woman which is built by Jimmy Shaw in his place. And uh, uh, that is the change in the role of women from domestic life to independent life to the life of self-respect and that the life of independence. We still we see inequality in the society. When we come across inequality in the society, there are certain events, there are certain, I mean, uh, uh, occasions which are good. And I would like to say some of the occasions. See, when the right, of Women's Property Act was passed in 1882. I mean, women can own the property. I mean, this freedom was given to them. This reduced the supposed inequality between man and woman. At the same time, we come to know that the right of voting at local and national elections was given to them in 1918. This also reduced some voting inequality uh, uh, between men and women up to some extent. The main issue of the right of voting we find in 19th century, and this was the period of concern of uh, feminism, or you can say uh, feminist theory. See, in number of, uh, number of uh, our authors contributed, one of them is Ellen Schauwalter. Ellen Schauwalter is one of the founders of feminist rhetoric criticism in the United States. Ellen Schauwalter's a literature of their own. British women, novelists from Bronte, sisters to Leslie, presents the history of women's writing in three pages. Three pages of women's writing have been presented by Ellen Schauwalter in her book entitled A Literature of Their Own. The first page is of feminine from 1840 to 1880. The second page is of the feminist from 1880 to 1920. And the third page is of female from 1920 onwards. The feminine phase was the period when women remained stick up to their family and domestic life. And it was the glorification of wifely and maternal role of women. In the feminist phase, women were struggling for the right to vote. They were claiming for that right and they own it. And in the female phase, women started their search for a journey, search for identity. They started their journey for self-realization. And in this way, uh, they, they achieved that identity also. It means that it was the kind of independent image we find uh, in the last, the last decade of 20th century. The more main focus of feminism is to strengthen the pattern. The patriarchal thinking has certain approach to look at women. Women are inferior to men. This is that is why feminist critics challenge superior position of women. According to William Golding, the building, will women are far superior and always superior. Whatever you give a woman, she will make it great. If you give her a House, she will make it a home. If you give her groceries, she will give you a meal. If you give her a smile, she will give you her heart. She multiplies and enlarges whatever is given to her. I mean, this is very great. This is the very noble role, which is presented by William Golding. And William Golding glorifies, enlarges the role of woman. I mean, this is the uh, uh, enlarged image of woman presented by William Golding. And in this way, we find that woman is becoming independent. At the same time, she takes every care and shares every experience. I mean, she is the real partner for the, for the man and she is really real caretaker 
of the family. That is the that is the glorification done by William Holding with these words. The patriarchal thinking brings obstacles in the development of man. This approach makes women dependent on man. It also suggests that in childhood, father takes care of woman. <coughs> father takes care of daughter. In you, husband takes care of uh, wife. And in old age, son takes care of mother. She is always made, I mean, she is always made silent. And silencing is done as long as she becomes silent. Shyness is inculcated, inculcated since childhood. I mean, shyness is imposed upon her in her childhood. At every moment, she is made aware that she is a girl. And she has to observe the limits. Much favor is done to son and not to daughter. We know that when the boy child, I mean, male child is born, I mean, the first grade switch is distributed, that is Pena. And when the female child is born, the second grade, the second grade switch, that is Chelebi, is distributed. This itself suggests discrimination between girl and boy, between male and female, female children. I mean, this discrimination starts from the birth itself. This is not good. I mean, when let it be male or female child, but Peda is to be distributed. I mean, the first great switch will establish equality. And in this way, we find that this discrimination prevails and continues. Domestic violence is the common fate of women. This has been continued since the days of Ramayana and Mahatma. In Ramayana, Rama, Ram asked Kita to go through ordeal through her chastity. I mean, he knows society. He believes in the chastity. I mean, he is sure of the chastity of Sita, but for society, he asked Sita to go through the ordeal in order to do her chastity. That happened to Sita also. It means that in this way, Sita suffered in the days of Ramayana. The same happened in Mahabharata with Draupadi. I mean, Draupadi also suffered. She was also insulted by Kauravas. I mean, in the assembly, of the king. I mean, this insult was done to uh, Draupadi and it happened in the days of Ramayana and Mahabharata also. I mean, these two women, I mean, Sita as well as Draupadi suffered a lot. I mean, ordeals, or you can say, uh, worse conditions, they also suffered. When she is insulted, at that time, she tolerated. There are some examples so long and so long. In Vijay Tendulkar's plays, we find the women, the women are coming forward, but still they are exploited. In the play Sakaram Binder, Sakaram is the head of the family. He tortures his own women, woman companion Lakshmi. I mean, this we find, we also find it in Rashiram Kodra. Dana Padanavis. Exploits, I mean, teenage girl glory. I mean, this happens even in the place of which I do Though the women are women are coming forward as strong. I can we can say independent. I mean, earning women. Sometimes shown dependent women, but sometimes shown earning women. We who believe in living relationship. I mean, that also presented are in the place of which I let us come to feminism in India. There is difference between feminism in Western countries and in India. The nature of feminism in India differs from Western feminism. It started in India as a social reformation. A number of social reformers were to uplift women from their pathetic condition. In India, brutal customs were in hope about women. Indian feminism opposes the long-standing traditions and rituals. The social workers eradicated such customs for the better rent, for the better life of women. Rajaram Mohan Rai was a great social worker and maker of modern He stopped the inhuman practice of sati, which was 
which was a great injustice to her as an individual. The woman was thrown in the funeral fire. I mean, very cruel, cruel, cruel custom. And this custom was stopped by Raja Ramakrishna. I mean, he suffered a lot, but he stopped that custom and he succeeded in it. And in this way, social reformation was done by Raja Ram Mohan Rai. And this was uh, the step uh, to improve the status of women. Then Mahatma Jyoti Bhakule came forward. He did a great work for education of women. The society was orthodox and was not, to, was not ready to provide education to women, to girls. Mahatma Phule was taught his wife, Savitri Bhai Phule, then started school for girls, and he also strongly educated the remarriages of these girls. He also contributed. Don't know Karvi's contribution is great, very much great, I would say, that he did not only educate remarriages of widows, but he himself married widow in 1899. This was the great decision of Marshi Dundu Keshav Karve, and this was a great step. And this was the initiation for the remarriages of the widows. Tarabai Sindhya's contribution cannot be neglected. She was considered as the first Indian feminist to foster against who fought against conventional patriarchy and caste system. Our famous book is Tri Prushtula. This was feminism in Western and Indian context. I mean, a number of social reformers tried their level best to uplift women and to improve the condition of women, and they succeeded. I mean, they wiped out, they eradicated such custom, such uh, rituals, and such a traditions which were obstacles in the progress, in the development of women, and which harassed, which oppressed women uh, uh, during their lifetime. Let us come to types of feminism. There are different types of feminism. Liberal feminism. Liberal feminism is one of the types of feminism. It believes in equality, educates equality, and at the same time, Educates that women should come to the mainstream of society. My point is, which I mean, equality, establishing equality is one of the one of the urge, one of the uh, uh, emphasis of the feminist movement, and that is done by liberal feminism. The second is radical feminism. Radical feminism believes in patriarchal thinking. I mean, federal good practices divide men and women in terms of their rights. And federal system does not create healthy society. Healthy society is created with the good relations. I mean, rhythmic relations between man and woman. And federal society uh, uh, does not allow that. That's why radical feminism uh, believes in the healthy relations of the society. Then the third is Marxist feminism, social feminism. This Marxist feminism focuses on class and gender as oppressive forces. I mean, these two forces. We know that capital, capital society gave birth to class. I mean, divided society into classes and also made discrimination on the basis of gender. And class and gender were the two oppressive, oppressive forces. And in capital world, women were paid less than men. That was the difference. And women has every right to earn like man. But they, they are treated as subordinate. That's why they are also paid late. That is taken into consideration by Marxist feminism. Then fourth is cultural feminism. Cultural feminism educates the change in the social approach of better Social approach in society, what is the image of the woman? I mean, how the image of, uh, image of woman can be changed, how she can be presented, as we know that uh, literature is the reflection of life. I mean, biased image, unfair image of women is presented in literature. 
that is the reflection of life and cultural feminism rejects it cultural cultural feminism wants to improve wants to present a good image of women in society and that's why wants to uh, uh, wants to make change in the social approach of pattern then the fifth is eco feminism eco feminism advocates the change in the social approach of pattern so, uh, uh, eco feminism takes into consideration close and affirmative relationship with nature i mean eco feminism presents close relationship with nature importance of nature and man always remains happy in the company of nature but patriarchy exploits nature and feminism feminism favors nature i mean women women worship nature they love nature they love plants and they love greenery they love everything that is the distinction this is presented by eco feminism i mean eco feminism in a sentence shows close and affirmative relationship with nature this is the brief survey of the types of feminism and let us come to digital feminism digital feminism is the most recent trend is uh, in feminism that technology the development technology affected almost all walks of life why not that uh, during covid 19 the conferences we used to organize has become us and that too digital that too with the help of ict and you have organized your webinar on digital humanities i mean with the help of ict as we are using webinars in the same way no work of life is an exception no feminism can be an exception i mean the development of technology has affected feminism also and feminism has turned into digital feminism feminism is deeply influenced by technological development the 21st century digital century offered many digital platforms to women to express their thoughts and feelings results of this many women have been using technological mediums for expressing their repressed thoughts and feelings digital media has become a tool for feminist practices now the smartphone is a weapon for feminist practices previously it was banned we know that previously pen was used i mean with the help of pen and paper the authors expressed or can say presented the women of the image of women in their literature but now with the help of smartphone smartphone has become weapon and with the help of smartphone the now women are uh, presenting themselves when we talk of the emergence of digital feminism we come to know bbc news night i mean opened the platform for women for for the presentation or i can say expression once virgin or for educate to use a weapon a uh, pain as a weapon to fight against patriarchy with the help of social media now you can create a loud noise in a second the noise of a number of women becomes a movement and these mediums of expression paved the way to the new development in feminism called digital feminism it is the fourth wave in feminism which prominently voices the sexual aggression earlier the pain was the weapon for women to write down their experiences but now social media is in use for the expression of women's intense thoughts and feelings digital spaces have given birth to secluded and safer communities for women where they express everyday ideas ranging from domestic traumas to harassment and harassment it is quite easy for women to write their domestic sexual physical and professional experiences obviously with the help of a digital platform women women have been expressing themselves it is quite easy for women to write their domestic and sexual physical professional experiences obviously 
with the help of digital platform women reached the ahead in the journey of feminism my point is the best use of social media is done by the feminism i mean women are coming forward on feminism uh, on social media with the help of social media and the me too moment simply accelerated feminism in the 21st century the social media like twitter facebook whatsapp blog writing instagram and now tiktok became the strongest strongest mediums for women to put forward their anguish that they experienced in a male dominated society my point is let it be instagram whatsapp telegram twitter facebook i mean all these mediums have been very nicely used for their depressed feelings or i can say for raising their points now women started to share and discuss their sufferings on public forums social media is a stage where women formed groups to create pressure against the long standing male oriented ideology as we know that we have whatsapp group we have instagram groups we have telegram groups in the same way there are groups of women and that becomes a moment and in a moment or in a second they reach to the world they uh, they reach uh, two people with the help of social media we may outburst to that long silence social media help women to change the patriarchal ideology that women are bit followers of that sector in india digital feminine digital media was strongly used so gentle for the nirbhay case to protest against the rape of an innocent girl i mean nirbhay case in nirbhay case the great use of social media the great use of digital media was as a result the rapists were arrested and hung to death i mean the second is the example example and that example is of priyanka reddy's rape case when we when we talk of priyanka reddy's rape case i mean that case shook the entire country she was raped and killed brutally very cruelly this case was very horrible and immediately the people expressed that protest on social and due to this that protest i mean a kind of atmosphere changed in india and uh, demanded justice wanted to establish justice and in this way we find a number of uh, a number of uh, 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 movements uh, have been created there is also one more example the activists created awareness against the article 377 of ipc as a result the supreme court passed a historic historic resolution and the resolution said women's free free to some extent within better for society women used social media to discuss and share their views related to the resolutions in india women started to use me too moment to voice their past sexual harassment me too moment we know what's a popular before some days a woman has at every everywhere she has been suffering from domestic and sexual violence however at she has been suffering from such type of violence however bearing all these difficulties she started to work outside their houses in the last decade of 20th century the media and the film industry are the fields where women live to their even lasting impressions they created their impressions they became famous they become popular but this success came to their way with the lot of violence especially sexual harassment that they have met almost a decade this me too moment revealed the many celebrities involved in sexual harassment cases many people commented on the women had to raise had to voice the anguish at that time when they were sexually harassed but had they stood against the harassment they would have lost their jobs and hence women had preferred to stay silent they remained silent 
they could not raise their voice. And in this way, we come to know that they suffered agnes, ordeals, though they were successful. They can easily voice their agni to movements like Mitch in the development of feminism. Feminism started for claiming equal rights between the sexes, and now it is to the using of technology to propagandize their injustice. Once there was a time when women remained silent throughout their life on the subject of sex, the silence was the rule for that. Women did not have media, space, and place for their sexual expression. The 21st century brought several changes in women's lives. The foremost is the availability of mediums for expression against the wrong practices of the male oriented society. However, women must have a strong will to come forward for the expression of experiences Virginia Woolf once expected. Through digital platform, they can easily reach to all corners of the world. Digital platform enable women to write and seek justice. This digital platform also enables to reach millions of people very fastly. Within a moment, within a second, and this uh, uh, digital platform is, I will say, a boon. I mean, digital platform is friendly to women. Thus, there were varieties of focuses of feminism. But the main focus of all the trends was to evaluate a woman's image portrayed in literature. All the trends sought equality based on gender with respect to nature, workplace, and family. It is noticed that feminists from old trends attempted to make the theory new on the scenario and the rights of women. Since the ancient times, feminists are trying for equality and the rights of women. The feminists are trying for these two issues, equality and the rights of women. These are the two concerns, two main concerns of the feminists. Has the respect of the women's thoughts? Answer comes in. Feminism from print media to electronic media, digital media has raised its voice for the better life and better treatment as human being. It should start from home. I mean, if we want to provide solution, give solution to the to the uh, predicament, to the I mean, highest image, I mean, uh, image uh, suppressed under patriarchy, and if we want to improve that image, we must want it from home. Women should be respected. Women should be given freedom to be given choice in their life. Women should be treated as human beings with individuality. At any rate, individuality is not marred. We, we have seen the travel of feminism from Middle Ages to the present time, I mean, 21st century. We come to know they have been suppressed. I mean, their rights have been suppressed and their individuality is not taken into consideration. They are individuals. They expect, they need, and uh, that self-respect is the right. That self-respect is to be given to them. Fair treatment is given to them. Fair outlook, fair approach, fair eye to them is very necessary. And they have every right to establish their identity. The fair treatment to women is the only solution to this problem. I feel so. The fair attitude, fair thinking, fair relations as an individual will definitely improve. The condition of women. In the face of globalization, when we talk of globalization, what is the image? What is the status of uh, status of uh, uh, women in globalization? I mean, the status of women is determined on the basis of two aspects. One is the legal status. Second is the actual treatment given to women in society, and third is opportunity for public life, and the fourth is character and extent of. These are the determinants of the status of women in society. I mean, are they getting such type of rights? Are they enjoying good status in the uh, globalization? When we talk of globalization, when we talk of freedom, when we talk of liberty, when we talk of equality between man and woman, in the face of globalization, the clear winds of change are blowing across. 
I see the clear wind is blowing across the world and that of change, change in the status quo. Now, woman has become very confident. See, knows a growing consciousness among women. Education, I mean their education is very important. And they have taken education, they are too higher education, they are too post higher education. I mean, they have done doctors, they are no engineers, they are no pilots, they are what not. They have done all that with the help of their education. At the same time, in them, a kind of awareness about their inferior status is also there. Increasing confidence. I mean, constantly a confidence is being increased by them. I mean, they themselves are coming forward. They themselves are building their images and they are caring for their own identity. So, a growing, a growing consciousness among women, education, awareness of their inferior status, increasing confidence, and economic independence has led women to question points against harsher social realities. My point is now, in globalization, in this 21st century, woman is very strong. And such a type of image of woman is presented by R.K. Narayan. In that context, R.K. Narayan uh, is a social reformist, I will say. I mean, when he presented image, image of woman, I mean, Rusi in the kind, Savitri in the novel, I mean, Dark room, we come to know that Arkan Narayan presented such type of image of the strong. I mean, that strong woman who has broken the shackles of domestic life, who has broken the shackles of family, she herself has come and she is, she is uh, uh, thinking of her own self, she is thinking for her own identity, and she is no more dependent upon man. She is not only interested in family life, she is also interested in her career. So women have broken all the cycles of family and domestic life. Have a, a, and now they also believe in a living relationship with man. And they, they are women of choice and have started journey of self-discovery, self-realization, self-identity. And this is the change of the status of women in 21st century, I will say, in the age of global history. But I would like to say that when we talk of the journey of women through this feminism, or you can say, the literary theory of feminism, we come to know from big to strong. This is the journey. But I would like to share one thing that the image changed from mid to strong in Western as well as Eastern countries. But the image of the tribal woman, the tribal woman is respected. The tribal woman is worshipped. Equal right is given to her. And even we come to know through this custom that dowry is given to bride, not to the groom. And dowry system is a curse. So, I mean, a good practice, despite feminism, I mean, the tribal community does not know feminism, but respecting, worshipping women and giving, uh, uh, giving right freedom, the right choice, right life, free life to women. And this is the community which does not know feminism, but enjoying. I mean, true relationship, genuine relationship as men and women. I mean, a genuine relationship, which uh, is very much uh, uh, essential for healthy life, for healthy society. And that is painted by even the tribe. Despite, despite this, all those things, I mean, uh, I, I, I want to make the one thing clear that as the rights are essential to women and the rights of voting, the rights of education, I mean the right to speak, the right to share, the right to build their own image, 
almost all rights the right to or almost all rights are to be given they should enjoy and that is their right also they should enjoy but at the same time they should look after the family because they are the excess of the family they are the backbone of the family and without women no family can survive i mean no home can be happy and no delicious food can be served and no happiness can be gained and that's why the role of the woman is very much significant and that role that role is to be maintained i mean enjoying almost all happiness and enjoying almost all life she should take care of the family and she should be the she should be the i mean a good partner of i mean woman should be the good partner of man for healthy society i mean uh, this we should uh, we should say in the wake of uh, uh, globalization about the status of woman sir principal dr sonu ne sir you have organized a very wonderful conference and that too on digital humanities and that is very nicely coordinated by dr jagir dar saruke and dr nilesh madiskar and your team i mean in the peak of covid 19 we are becoming digital we are perverse with technology and with the help of technology with the zoom app sir you have really used technology you have really made use of ict and with the help of ict you have organized such a wonderful conference that too on digital humanities sir organizing conference and that too online conference that too e conference that too webinar is not a job for hilly college and that too small college in a remote area and you have organized it and you have made it very successful so i congratulate principal dr p s sonu sir the management and especially dr jahangir dar sarunke dr nilesh mariskar teaching and non teaching staff of the college and the team who are behind this webinar sir once again i congratulate you and i thank the participants for giving me patient listening and i thank you sir once again thank you for giving me an opportunity to deliver a lecture in this national webinar sir thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir i was really spellbounded with your beautiful words you have presented the development of feminism from the since the chaucerian age to post modern era and how a digital things can be a weapon for the protection of the women that also you have nicely narrated there indian feminism which is a part of indian history that also been presented very nicely sir really the phases of feminism are really portrayed very nicely by you on the behalf of one participant elizar anazar there is one question sir what is the difference between equity and equality what is the difference between equity and equality that questions been raised by aizal aman see equity is the principle and that principle is to be observed but equality is given by the society and that equality is human unless that equality is provided equality will not be used uh, uh, established equity is the principle but equality is to be established by human beings i mean we talk of equity but we don't see that equality even today we don't see that equality which is expected by women we know that everywhere we find a kind of distinction a kind of discrimination between men and women even the things are made so since the childhood 
that equality is not seen in the case of women. So equity is the principle and equality is to be established by the human beings. And that equality makes us healthy and gives us pleasure and also, also necessary for the healthy society. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for being with us for an hour. Now we are going to start the session fourth. And the session fourth will be conducted by Mr. Viral Dedia, who is a co-founder of ItFly Mumbai and is also a tech innovator. He is a smart guy who is knowing about the technology very well. He is well acquainted with the technology. I would like to invite Mr. Viral Dedia to address on the topic digital tools in literature classes. Over to you, Mr. Viral Dedia. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, you're audible. You're audible. Okay, perfect. Continue. Let me just begin by sharing my screen. So I put up a question here for all of us. Uh, it was a wonderful session so far, and uh, now uh, let's try and do some things here. So the topic for today is uh, digital tools for literature. In the meanwhile, uh, there is this question, how many of us have tried e-learning platform? You can go to menti.com and you can put this particular code and you can answer uh, this question. So firstly, uh, I'm really excited uh, uh, really very happy to be the part of such a wonderful session so far uh, it's been very uh, knowledgeable uh, and uh, informative so uh, also i would like to thank all the audience for being such a wonderful audience and such a participative audience uh, with this let me begin with sharing some data with you uh, which is related to our topic today. So let me uh, tell you that today as India, we are the global leaders in monthly data consumption. Uh, we have the cheapest internet that is possible today. We are consuming about 9.8 GBs of data per month. Secondly, the mobile penetration in India was very high last year and uh, as far as whatever I have understood it is 47% of our users who are on the internet today and most of them are in the age group of our students. So 90% of uh, our students is something who some, uh, uh, those already who have internet connectivity. So the center of gravity from computers has moved towards mobile phones, uh, which is already fitted into our pocket. Uh, so all the tools that are required, all the digital tools that are required for learning is with you in your hands or in your pockets. So with this, let me start uh, with my uh, presentation today. So I can see that quite a few of us have put only yes. Uh, I would still request all of us here uh, to go to this website mentioned above, use this particular code and uh, answer this question so that this would enable me to take this session efficiently. In the meanwhile, let me take you to the topic. So uh, let's understand the e-learning uh, tools or features that we require for literature. I have uh, been hearing this question that what do you want the kids, your students to do with technology? So I put some uh, answers and wrong and right answers yours. So here the technology is to raise awareness and not to make prezies, not to start blogs, not to, uh, there's a whole list of uh, items that I've shared here. It's for starting conversations, finding answers, 
to their questions uh join partner change of mind make a difference take action drive change so these are the various things that you would want to do with technology so for whatever i understand technology is a tool technology is a enabler uh it's not a learning outcome i don't want students to learn technology i want to learn i want them to learn concepts via technology secondly a lot of us have been asking these questions that is technology going to replace teachers okay so i don't think that is what we are talking about i don't think that uh, is something that we are looking at uh, i strongly believe that we'll need teachers however technology is a enabler technology is going to be a tool that we're going to use efficiently that we're going to use to solve quite a few problems uh, that may arise now or in future as well okay let's use this to save our time uh, let's use this to uh, be better in terms of uh, deliveries in terms of uh, our processes uh, more efficient and so on okay so that is the role of technology uh, there are various ways to use uh, digital tools i'm sure uh, uh, our former speakers have covered most of these i just want to uh, take you through this some aspects again so a lot of teachers actually ask me that how do you curate quality content because we as teachers know our students very well we know their aptitude we know their iq and so on uh we should create content which is just good enough for them to understand for them to grasp the concepts or to grasp uh some technique or whatever so uh, that is uh, the first thing that i would want to share there will be various digital tools available in the market so broadly i've categorized them in uh, exploring some tools so you can always go on to google uh pick the topic uh on what what particular tool that you are wanting to use and figure out a particular tool uh there will be tools for writing and research so this may be like if you are taking a online lecture then you would want to write something which is a white board so such tools are available and uh, third is you want to focus on critical thinking and creativity right uh so it has to be engaging it has to be uh as these times are critical for improving on the sincerity part for improving on having control over your students today uh you need to be more creative you need to be engaging uh and focusing on critical thinking so these are the various tools uh i'd like to introduce our platform which is an e learning platform uh which is called as edfly learn as a teacher the few things that you would want to do with your students is one is you would want to create your own course add your content that you can share with your students and so on second is you would want to probably conduct a live lecture with them you would want to have a discussion you would want to have a engagement or a feedback thought from them so this is a second thing scheduling a lecture the third thing is you would want to probably communicate with them you will want to engage with them so uh, let's say if a student doesn't understood a concept he should be able to write back to you he should be able to question you uh, uh if he's facing some difficulties solve or uh, understanding something in grammar or something in literature then he should be able to write back to you and you should be able to reply back to him so it has to be engaging and the fourth thing is once you're done teaching you would want to evaluate your students you would want to uh, uh take a quiz you would want to uh, do some things around this okay so these are the four major things that you would want to do with your students and which is something that we've already incorporated with edfly learn let me take you to the so these are the basic steps uh, you can do all of this through our platform you can try edflylearn.com uh, you will figure out second in these times you will also look at maintaining various databases to the platform so you can maintain students database teachers database what content you've been able to upload as institute you'll be able to check on all the teachers content that they've uploaded and finally the result database so all of this you can maintain onto one single platform like i've already mentioned you can take assignments you can do advanced course management as a institute 
uh, content store is something that I'll want to take in little detail, and you can of course take quizzes and all. So let me uh, also take you through content store. Uh, we've got a huge teachers population in the country today. A lot of us might be really good at curating good quality content. Okay, so here the agenda is that for those of us who can curate and can contribute to this entire platform, you can upload your content and you can keep it open with your other fellow members, other teachers out there uh, who probably do not have the infrastructure or the knack of creating good quality content. Uh, this is the kind of platform that we've built where as teachers you can donate or offer content with your other uh, faculty members. So when this is happening, imagine with the kind of population that we already have, I'm sure that we should be able to find some quality content for our students. We should be able to find all quality content which is relevant with our students. I don't feel that one particular content is going to be generic and going to be applicable for all our students. So uh, this as a tool is something which is very important. Uh, you can also use this through Edfly Learn. As teachers who are not being able to curate good quality content can use the already curated content from other teachers. We have also taken copyright as a serious affair and we have uh, been able to incorporate all the necessary uh, uh, checks and balances for uh, copyrights as well. As we talk, we have seen a tremendous rise in the number of users who are adopting e-learning tools, and uh, which brings me to my second concern, which is security. Any learning without security is going to be very, very dangerous. So while choosing a tool, make sure that the tool is secured, okay? We have seen a lot of uh, hack, we have heard about a lot of lectures that have got hacked, a lot of uh, irrelevant content that is being shared onto the lectures. So at Edfly, we have heavily invested on security. All our users are mobile number verified users, which in turn are KYC compliant. Second is none of the users from the outside world without being on Edfly Learn as a platform will be able to access any of our content will be able to join any of our lectures. So be rest assured about security. Uh, for the teachers who have joined our content programs, we are also paying royalties to them for the content that they are creating. Uh, it's an automated system that we've built, which, which is similar to a, any page rank algorithm. Uh, if your content is downloaded more, you will be rewarded more. It's that kind of a system. And for this, we, for getting this platform better, we would like to invite all of us here, all the teachers uh, who are present, all students who are present for joining various programs that we are running at Edfly Learn. Let me also run you through those. Uh, we've got various beta programs, which is uh, all the new features that we are opening are open to the beta program users first. And once they, give us a heads up that this is good to go live. We open it for the rest of the world. We are running various content programs. For those of us who have the knack of creating good quality content, you can join our content program. Uh, help the society by building the content. Also help yourself by making some money out of it. We are running various faculty development programs like the one that we are running right now. Uh, we are also running multiple levels of faculty development program. This is a basic one. We have also done uh, some uh, level two, level three kind of programs. Like Sir have already mentioned, we have written some guidelines for effectivity. We are writing some rules that would help us for effectivity. And we are collaborating with various players. At Edfly Learn, we alone would not be enough to give seamless experience. Uh, so we are collaborating with many people. Uh, at this juncture, I would like to say that Edfly is committed. We are committed. Okay, let me just mute some.
at edfly we are committed uh and uh, i am personally committed to giving all of us with a platform that we can rely on uh, we the teams are working really hard to uh, getting uh, all the pieces together for effective learning okay so with this thanks a lot we are also into only education technology space these are the various services that we are offering uh, for some of us who would want to go live uh in these situations as well we'll be more than happy to help so with this i would thank you all uh for uh, being such a wonderful audience i would thank the organizers the college for giving us this opportunity to uh, host this platform for uh, all of us here so thanks a lot again uh, over to you sir thank you sir you have nicely explained about the how the digit digital tools are important for teaching literature classes how the digital world is useful for the students nowadays it's a need of an hour and we have to use that one thank you sir thanks a lot for joining with us now thank you now we are moving toward the last but not the least session and that's valedictory remarks that would be made by dr shashank mane Dr. Shashank Mane is a student of Savitri Bai Phule Pune University. He received the prestigious DAD scholarship from the German government in 2005 for his MPhil research. He, I would like to tell you that he was invited as a visiting faculty in the theater studies at Freie University Berlin. he completed his pgct and pgdt diploma courses from efl or iflu university hyderabad he i like to tell you that he also completed his phd from savitri bai phule pune university in the year 2016 several research papers he has published in the national and international conferences as well as seminars his area of interest are specially translation and adaptation studies short stories and drama he is a master of drama i like to invite mr dr shashank mane sir to express his valedictory remark dr shashank mane over to you hello sir can you hear me am i audible yeah you are audible sir continue okay principal dr solavne sir president dr ajinkya desle sir the registrar of kavitri bahina bai choudhary national choudhary uh, north marathwada university dr nilesh sir fellow speakers and dear viewers good afternoon to one and all we are moving towards the end of the conference and i am here for the valedictory session in my talk i shall briefly speak about digital humanities and its relevance in the present time i shall also touch upon the relationship between digital humanities and theater studies and finally the digital archiving which is crucial in digital humanities i have been given 10 to 15 minutes and i shall try to be as brief as possible digital humanities is the most suitable theme for a conference at present just take a look at how efficiently the people in humanities use digital technology these days due to the corona epidemic there is a need to use technology for academic purposes thus youtube lectures zoom meetings and webinars have especially become famous and useful currently in our everyday tasks we constantly find ourselves negotiating technology our present day experience of the humanities whether we are talking of literature films music are all profoundly impacted by the digital technologies what is digital technology digital humanities or humanities computing has been around for the last few decades computers have become part of our lives for the last 30 years 
in india since the late 1980s computers have become uh, have come in a big way after the introduction of the internet or the world wide web in the 1990s things changed rapidly and the users of computers and the internet increased all over the world now computers are not used only by by it engineers or professionals but also by commoners and even by children during this time digital humanities has accumulated a strong professional apparatus that is more rooted in english than any other departmental book it's because of the international dominance of the english language as a standard language of the internet the areas of digital technologies have become more and more diverse it is used in medicine the natural sciences and recently it is also used in the humanities digital humanities is the application of digital technology which especially means the application of computers and software to study humanities if i write an article type it on a computer and print it it is hardly an exercise in digital humanities so thus by publishing a lecture on youtube i am not doing digital humanities it is much more than that and i shall briefly explain it i shall very soon explain it thus the role of digital humanities is not merely using computers to perform some ordinary tasks digital technology is used to analyze the data to explain it and to come to a conclusion the speakers prior to me have elaborately spoken on what is digital humanities hence i won't repeat the ideas i shall now move on to relationship between digital humanities and theater studies which is my area of concern theater studies have been immensely benefited by digital humanities the first international theater conference was held in paris in 1900 where critics drama teachers and actors gathered to discuss current issues in the field of performative arts the latest developments in stage technology and a few regulations among other things musia gabriel lefou a music critic suggested making use of the then recent technologies such as the phonograph and kinematograph in theaters he also suggested of making film recordings of plays so that the performances could be preserved for the next generation thus one can see parallels between lefou's concerns and those of digital humanities namely the preservation and sharing of ephemeral arts and the desire to make them accessible to interested laymen teachers students and researchers nowadays digitizing performances have become a norm recently during the lockdown the globe theater and the national theater in england showed performances of plays on youtube which enabled thousands of viewers all over the world to watch them which otherwise they could not have watched thus the technology has proved to be a boon to the humanities the use of digital sounds lights and computerized graphics on the stage have made the performances more interesting another important concern in digital humanities is digital archiving digital archiving is an important branch of digital humanities in recent times on one hand there has been a growth of electronic reading via kindle ipad and other instruments on the other hand there has been a vast expansion in text digitization like the project gutenberg and google books a scholar like franco moretti has taken up data mining and visualization for the distance reading of multiple books at the same time digital archiving is a process of making digital copies for access and conservation of rare texts digital archiving has many benefits it lets us access material and texts which otherwise we cannot obtain it conserves endangered material and allows refinements in the original what does it imply to have a digital copy of a text or of an artifact it renders to an original artifact it looks like the original 
and gives a feeling of handling the original. It is a copy in the absence of the real thing. We all know the painting of Mona Lisa, but how many of us have seen the original painting? Very few of us. We have seen the photograph of the original. Thus, digital archiving is highly useful to the people who do not have access to the original. But these are external or superficial applications of technology to humanities. To continue the example of Mona Lisa, in digital humanities, the painting would be analyzed by taking digital photographs of the original, by studying the color patterns and structures, by using special software, and thus trying to understand the craftsmanship of the great painting. A digital copy of a text has a life of its own, and it could be handled by many. Digitizing the ancient texts and artifacts is the current popular method of preserving and sharing the artifacts. Thus, an ancient text is digitized, which is worn out and therefore dangerous to handle. Such a text could be shared with many. The OCR, the Optical Character Record Project, has been immensely useful in preserving such texts. By using digital copies, it becomes easier for researchers to compare or contrast the texts. This kind of technology is especially useful to study Elizabethan texts, particularly the Shakespearean plays. As we know that there are at least three earlier versions for each of Shakespeare's plays, hence this kind of technological aid helps the textual scholars to prepare a more informative, more comprehensive, and more user-friendly edition of the play. So the editor could write about the sources of the plays and influences on it. The authorship of certain Elizabethan plays is debatable. Digital humanities is especially useful in finding out the real authorship of the text. It also helps critics to provide glossaries and concordances. Earlier, it was a laborious and error-prone activity to write glossaries and concordances. <coughs> but thanks to digital technology, due to which more accurate and comprehensive copies could be made. Thus, for instance, the website opensourceshakespeare.org gives all the concordances in Shakespeare's plays. For example, it shows how many times and in which plays the word holy appears. It also gives the different meanings of the word in the plays. Such type of exercise is extremely useful for the linguists as well as for the critics and it is possible only because of technological support. Digital humanities thus mathematically compute types of data and uh, sorry types of data that we commonly observe in an impressionistic way. Digital humanities has also seen a rise due to the neoliberal economic turn and its impact on the public universities. As state funding declines, tuition and other fees and educational costs rise, endowments and private financial aid to public educational institutions also come down. And as full-time faculty are increasingly replaced by differentially waged staff, often part-timers, guest faculty, etc., students, research scholars, younger faculty have come together to use digital humanities as a conscious tool. Recording talks, presenting papers in absentia while digital instruments, using blogs for self-publication, the emergence of sites like academia.edu where scholars can publish and exchange opinions and download others' writings have taken great strides forward in the last decade. Thus, I have briefly touched upon the relevance or benefits of digital humanities, its innovative features, and the underlying scholarly interests and desires within the humanities. We are in the midst of a change of working modes in the humanities but we can build on skills and professional expertise that we are trained in. Digital technology supplies the demands of researchers in the form of research tools, data sharing, 
crowdsourcing, distant reading, relational queries, annotations, and public scholarships. Uh, at the same time, these tools and possibilities make us reconsider our methodologies in research and the archiving of our ephemeral objects of study. Digital humanities can facilitate the creation of knowledge and the building up of new communities. There is a great need for collaborative research where professionals in technology and humanities could assist one another. I close here with a well-known quotation from Bernard Shaw. I quote, if you have an apple and I have an apple and we exchange these apples, then you and I will each have one apple. But if you have an idea and I have an idea and we exchange these ideas, then each of us will have two ideas, unquote. So let's share our professional expertise so that knowledge and information would be available to all. I thank you. I thank all the organizers for inviting me for this valedictory address. It has been a great learning experience for me to, uh, to speak at the National Web. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now over to Dr. Nilesh, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. You have really expressed your valedictory remark. Uh, very nicely you have presented. Now, the last part of this session is remain. This conference is remain. That is a lot of thanks. I would like to invite my colleague, HOD of English Department, Dr. Jagidar Savanki, sir, to propose a lot of thanks. Over to Dr. Savanki, sir. Thank you, Dr. Nilesh Maheshkar, sir. First of all, I humbly request to all the participants to fill up the feedback question here link at the evening. Without submitting that, you will not get the e certificate. So please consider my request. Sir, it gives me immense pleasure to express my vote of thanks to the inaugurator. Honorable Registrar of Kavetri Bahinabai Choudhury, North Maharashtra University, Jalgaon, Professor Dr. B. V. Pawar, for his valuable contribution on this occasion. I heartily express my vote of thanks to the chairperson, respected Dr. Ajink Desle, for his valuable presidential remarks. I cordially record my deep sense of gratitude to the renowned resource person, respected Dr. Suvarna Shinde, respected Dr. Epi Kharnar, sir, respected Dr. Divesh Kumar Bhatt, and respected Viral Dedhiya for their invaluable contribution. I would like to express my sincere thanks to Motherly figure, respected Dr. Mangalatai Desle, respected Brunal Tai Desle, and the head of the institution, respected Dr. P. S. Sonone, for their moral support and sound motivation. Finally, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Dr. Shashank Mani for his valedictory remarks and also express my special vote of thanks to respected Manisha Thakur, Ma'am Viral Dediya sir and Kushal Thakkar sir for their incredible support. I would like to express special thanks to my friend Dr. Naneshwar Chauhan and all the participants across the world, oh sorry, across the country and teaching and non-teaching staff of my college. Once again, I heartily thanks to all of you. Thank you very much. Your contribution is behind this grand success of the seminar. Thank you very much. I request uh, Viralji to close the session.
please. Hello? Yes, sir. Viral ji. Yes, sir. Please close the session. Sir, I have closed the live stream. Yes, okay, sir. Okay. I don't want to be live now.